Hi guys, Ryu here. In this video we're going to be talking about triangulation and I want to tell you what you need to know about triangulation, what are the most important tricks, uh, what to avoid and how to create a really clean triangulation foil mesh for export to Substance Painter, Unreal Engine, Mamose Toolbox, doesn't matter because each of these software is going to have different algorithm for triangulation. So if you don't triangulate your mesh in Blender, it might be fine. But in most cases, you will have some shading problems, especially when you're using Angons, right? So then some people are going to tell you that, oh, you shouldn't be using Angons. It's, it's all bullshit, okay? Just kill them with fucking fire. You can use Angons in game assets, not a problem, as long as the, the geo that, you know, the, and the Angons run through doesn't bend. Um, you can even use Angons on curved surfaces, as long as you know what you're doing, and you know how to control the shading. It's more tricky, but it's possible. And uh, especially when using stuff like, for example, normal transfer, whatever. Right? It also doesn't matter if you're creating high poly or a low poly. It, it just doesn't matter, guys, okay? If you're not exporting a mesh to ZBrush or you're not uh, working in VFX industry and you really need quads, okay, then you don't have to worry about it, right? If it's not organic, for example, right, you can perfectly go ahead with uh, with N-Guns, all right? So the trick to triangulating N-Guns is that you need to take a bit more care. And you need to know a few things about how to do this, all right, and what to avoid. So let me show you here is a fully triangulated model, right? And it's a high poly. Um, it's the model I um, rendered recently and exported to Substance Painter and textured it over there. And you know, this is flawless, there's no, no issues, right? And uh, I want to show you how I actually approach triangulation. So if you look here in the um, in the modifier stack, we got bevel, and we got hard normals, and we got triangulate modifier running on it, right? So that's uh, that's it. It's a default triangulation modifier. But if I'm gonna grab the same uh, piece of geo, it's literally the same piece of geo, right? But the modifiers are a bit different here. Okay, it's just a bevel and weighted normals. If I'm going to triangulate this as is, right, if I'm going to just simply go here to modifier and add triangulation, you'll see I'm going to get problems. I'm going to get problems, first of all, because my triangulate is below weighted normals, which you should avoid. But even with the weighted normals and triangulation running above it, you're still seeing shading problems. Why? In my experience, weighted normals doesn't really work very well for exporting mesh and triangulation, okay? What I would suggest doing is removing the garbage and going with hard normals. Look how clean that is, okay? See the difference? And it can show you the difference on almost every single geo here. For example, here you can see that. You see this shading problem? Here. See that? Watch. Gone. Right. Now there is an interesting walk around and I want to show you something cool. You see that the shading is still messed up on weighted normals, right? So if you really wanted to use weighted normals, there is one way to go around it. And um, I'm going to be talking about this in a, a bit later in the video. But if you um, slide this to the maximum here, weight 200, and then change the face influence and switch here to uh, from none to affected, you'll see it's going to actually flex the faces. Now, the only problem with this one is that harder normals are actually faster because in hard ops, right, there's a really cool settings that uh, let me show you. I'm going to get a cube here and I'm going to go here to my control tilde menu and I'm going to I'm going to enable harder normals to be added with the bevel, right? So now if I'm going to bevel this, right, my bevel is going to be uh, coming with the hard normals enabled, which means it allows me to work a bit faster because I don't have to add weighted normals to every single mesh and change all these settings for uh, for the triangulated mesh, right? So if you're going to be using this method, you will need to enable um, this keep normals here function in the triangulation modifier. So watch this, if I turn it off, it will you know not work as well as with this one enabled, okay? So you can barely see that, but there is a difference, okay? So you want, again, this one to 100, and you want to face influence uh, on the bevel to switch to affected, and then you need to turn on to keep normal. So that's a lot of clicks, guys, right, for every single mesh. Whereas uh, with uh, way and harder normals, all you need to do is simply enable it here with uh, hard ops. Every single item you're going to add to, doesn't matter what it is, right, every single model you're going to add to um, to the scene and you're going to start beveling this, you know, you're going to run hard normals automatically on it. So if then you're going to triangulate it, 
you know, you're not really running into many problems, right? So let me just drop a triangulation and boom, right? See what I mean? So um, I still would suggest the way to norm uh, harder normals, but you know, it, your mileage might vary. And also, there are certain situations, very rare ones, when I noticed that uh, hard normals wasn't really working for me, and I had to go so you know, way to normals, but it's really rare. So I would really suggest you go with um, hard normals, or at least check how your shading looks in corners, right? Especially where the bevel goes through with weighted normals versus hard normals. That's one. Two, you should definitely be using triangulation modifier because when you triangulate mesh with control T and you're just gonna leave it. So if I'm gonna go to edit mode, press A to select everything and press control T to triangulate it. I will have a triangulated mesh, but you know, this is baked. So if I want to, you know, it's, it's just applied to the geo. So if I want to, for example, change my UVs, then I'm going to have a problem because the, the correct order of working on the game as it finished your modeling, then you optimize your model, then you unwrap the model and then you triangulate model and then you export it, right? So you need to triangulate it after you UV unwrap. But if you have some problems with UVs in your, or for example, texturing engine, you're fucked because you need to, you know, undo the triangulation with, you know, which Technically, with hard ups, it's possible because what you could do is, you know, we could go Control T, right? And now the mesh is triangulated. What we could do is go here and operations and, you know, clean mesh. And it is going to clean the mesh, but not always, okay? Some of this stuff could be could be left over and you will have to clean it manually, okay? So I'm just saying uh, it's better to go with, uh, with, you know, triangulation modifier. It's just cleaner, okay? However, before you apply triangulation modifier, you need to play with the manual triangulation to make sure that the shading is proper. Because, for example, if I have this triangulation modifier running here, you can see that, right? And I'm going to apply this, so I'm going to go operation smart apply. You will see that I'm going to have problems. Like, for example, here, not many people will notice, but this is pulled bevel, okay? And the reason why it's pulled is because of these very steep angles uh, coming, you know, into that curved here, curved bevel. So when I'm going to apply the bevel by going visual to mesh, you'll see what I mean. That is what's causing the problem. These two verts were pulled away all the way here by these, these edges, right? And this is what's causing this shading problem. So the way to tackle this, you need to understand how triangulation works and how Blender actually connects lazily um, any type of booleans or edges, okay? Because, okay, let's grab a cube. I'll show you a very simple example, right? I'm gonna grab a box cutter. I'm gonna cut it in the middle here, right? And I'm gonna apply this, okay? Look how Blender runs these edges, okay? I mean, in this case, it's not a disaster, but it still runs them into the corner. You know, a preferable way of running the edge would be, you know, something like this, okay? So then, when you, for example, want to, you know, chair for these, right? You're gonna do something like this, you're not going to end up with garbage like that, because if I have these edges going through the middle here and I remove these, right, I can very easily, you know, chamfer all these, uh, all these edges, right, or bevel them, see what I mean? So it's simply cleaner, there's no pulling, right, especially if you have an edge, you know, running very steeply like that, okay, this is going to pull immediately, okay, so if I didn't have these bevels and I have this edge going really steeply here like that, right, and I guarantee you it's just gonna be really ugly. So if I'm gonna do this one and run a bevel on this, right? Okay, you see what I mean? See what I mean? So that's what's happening, okay, with your mesh. Look at this fucking mess, right? So that's the problem, okay? And this is what's happening with triangulation. It's the same principle, all right? So what you need to do, you need to fix that. So you need to help Blender a little bit by simply running supporting edges. So how would I do that? Well, it's very simply to, it's it's really simple, guys. You can notice it in here how I did that, okay? This is not a triangulated mesh, it's a mesh prepared for triangulation. So, you know, I connected, for example, uh, these two verts, right? I connected these um, two on the opposite sides, okay? I run a vert from here, I mean, edge from here to here. And then I sliced them in half, okay? So I kind of created a point all right, this should be this should be merged. By the way, I created a point here for all these verts to merge in one certain central point, and you can actually run with if you have machine tools. Sorry, if you have mesh machine and hard ups, you can go to Q and you can go to operations and star connect 
to actually help Blender and sort of do it for Blender before Blender does something fucking retarded, right? So you could just do it manually if you wanted to. But I guarantee if you run triangulation, this is what it's going to connect to because there's no other edge you can go to, right? There's no other choice left for it to go to. So it might look like a fucking mess, but it doesn't matter because if it's a high poly, right? You, you know you know you don't care about the number of polygons if it's a low poly it's gonna be much easier because there's a much fewer um, you know, much fewer segments here okay what you want to do is you you want to basically guide blender to where you you know when you think it should connect the edges so like I said if I'm gonna create a connection between these right the triangulation will happen in this area because now when I'm gonna apply this don't worry about the shit it doesn't matter i want to apply this you see what i mean how clean it got triangulated because i'm telling him where to go same here on the top right if i go back and i'm going to slice this in half here like this okay like that press e to continue cutting and grab this one and move it somewhere here for example all right to the corner uh to fix this here all right and this is still quite steep, so I, I will probably, you know, run another edge here, like this, maybe, okay, and then maybe do something like this, alright, maybe, and then, you know, it's gonna be very easy for Blender to understand where to run the triangulation, right, so if I'm gonna start connect this, and for example, select this one and start connect here, okay, go to operations and start connect, if I'm gonna apply the triangulation now, right, you see what I mean, how clean that is? Right? It looks, the apology is like garbage, but it doesn't fucking matter because all you care about is the shading. I mean, shading is clean, right? And that's what it's, you know, that's what it's about. So you need to help Blender with triangulation a little bit. And you gotta be a bit more careful with low poly because low poly, you know, the count of the polygons actually matters. But quite frankly, you know, with the new hardware, it just doesn't matter if it's 17k or 21k, okay? It's not a big deal, okay? So don't worry too much about it. You do want to run bevels because, you know, I'm running one segmented bevels because um, this will allow you to bake a really beautiful bevel, which is a high poly bevel, if you bake it from high poly to low poly, right? It's going to allow you to bake a much more beautiful bevel onto the low poly if you have actually a bevel running on the low poly. So that's, that's why we're using mid poly beveling um, with Josh and that's why we, we're pushing it so hard because that's the proper fucking way to do it. If you lo lo log into Star Citizen and you want to see some quality fucking modeling and quality renders and, you know, really beautiful um, bevels, that's where you're gonna find them, you know, games like um, Alien is Isolation, etc. They, they're all created based on the mid poly, you know, idea, right? So, baking bevels on sharp edges will result in shit fucking bakes, okay? So, don't do it. Especially now when the hardware is easy, can handle it, so don't worry about it too much, okay? Same like I said with quads, you know, don't ov overstress with quads. If now, if you really need quads, right, you can always run um dice on certain places right so for, so we're going to go to side view orthographic and q and then go to dice press v and there we go and then you can you know you can you can you can literally add your quads if you really want to but i'm telling you guys you don't need it you don't fucking it's a flat surface what the fuck do you need quads for okay all you need to do is worry about the shading that's the most important thing you want to create a bevel with an even number of segments on your high poly okay if you have an even number of segments and an even number of edges you can deselect um, I mean you, you can select every sing every second one here in the middle right so these two outer edges will not be affected which means the uh, the edges that hold this 90 degrees angle here the flat surface they're not going to be affected so you're simply going to reduce the resolution of the bevel which will give you fewer points to connect. So now it's much easier to do it, right? So, you know, if I copy to the other side and copy to the bottom, uh, all I need to do is simply connect these, right? And connect these. And connect these here in the middle, right? And I don't even need this vert, okay? I don't need it, so I can dissolve it, right? I don't need that vert. All I need is here, okay, right? And then I can run my triangulation, um, you know, I don't need this one either, I don't need these two either. All I need is these, um, these points here, because when I'm going to triangulate it now, so select everything and um, control T, you see how it's going to get triangulated very cleanly here. So even if I run a bevel, 
it's gonna be fine okay so there you go see it's no problem there's all this triang triangulation going on but if you didn't have that you know it could be problematic okay so like i said um, it's important to triangulate the mesh before you export it. It's important to know how to how to manage uh, the shading of your uh, of your triangulation. So use the manual triangulation to do it. So simply Control T, right, to apply it. So select everything, Control T to apply it to see how the shading looks temporarily, right? It's fucked up in here. Okay, so go back. And then try to fix it and then let's run a knife in here right and let's apply this and let's try it again i guarantee you it's gonna be st still too steep i'm just i'm just pretty sure it's gonna be too steep but we can try it okay Control t right and both still is pulling you see what i mean <clears throat> you need to keep trying right so let's grab this and let's uh let's slice it a bit more i'm gonna slice it somewhere here right and then we're gonna press e and slice it in here in half all right and then should be better so now i can run these edges right i could run these edges for example here so i can run star connect okay and i could run these edges right here star connect right and when i'm going to run triangulation now so select everything Control t you see i don't have a problem here at all right it's, it's much cleaner it's pulling still a little bit but um you know you could create one more point here it's not a problem but it's much better okay so um, this is how you do it guys okay and remember to use harder normals i've i've noticed that harder normals are far more useful than uh, weighted normals and i have problems with shading on like literally almost every single i think there's nothing in here that has weighted normals running on it okay I've tried it and it didn't work on any of these pieces, and it doesn't matter if you go to um, there's a there's a trick you can you can perform to flex the faces a bit more using uh, weighted normals. You can flex this one to 100, right? Change it to face influence, turn this off, and go here to bevel and switch to affected. But it doesn't really fucking help. Okay, it's still a mess. All right. So when I'm going to let me see that. As a triangulation if i apply this okay so i'm gonna go to uh, i'm gonna apply this let me see if it's gonna actually help uh, operations smart apply you still there is a bit of a shading problem here i can see that and i guarantee you that if i switch that to weighted normals this is gonna get improved right see what i mean it's gone you can barely see it but it's gone so these tiny tiny nuances you know they're still gonna be visible so like i said weighted normals not so good for triangulation for exports i would go with hard normals and the last thing is that when you export you don't have to apply anything okay i'm exporting my mesh literally like this okay so i'm using i'm leaving bevel i'm leaving triangulation and i'm just selecting everything Control f with machine tools and export as fbx and i'm done okay i simply click this one select selected objects only and export and every single um, fbx of mine you have live bevels and live triangulation why because when you want to go back to it right you want to have bevels live and triangulation live so you can fix things if they're problematic in the texturing or gaming engine right so you want to have this flexibility which is why um working that way is just really quick and easy also if you want to push this thing down the line uh, or to someone else who wants to texture it or to someone else who wants to add some elements to it right or let's say you're going to add some elements to it yourself in the future you're fucked because if you have triangulation applied to your mesh you're gonna have to clean it first to re-unwrap it because when you start adding cuts in here you have to re-unwrap the mesh right so it's a it's another problem added to your list of problems anyway guys that's it from uh, from me for today i hope it helps you out guys um you know creating game assets is really easy not that difficult it just requires a lot of patience and uh you know you need to follow certain steps and if someone again tells you that you need to use squats them to fuck off because they don't know what the fuck they're talking about thanks for watching see you later